Hey ladies and gentlemen, hi guys, been doing it's your boys in here and welcome to uh well this is gonna be a very interesting showdown battle, a very important one. This is the reason I've actually decided to record it. Uh, not really record it but save it and kinda like post narrate it over it. Uh what is the purpose of this battle? Uh basically there's a lit league going on right now. Uh I I am the elite in there and uh, my original plan was to have uh, dual weather but afterwards I've decided to go uh, drizzle uh, so basically solo uh, rain uh, theme team but you see I actually took a while to make my team and there was also one more participant that truly uh, outshine himself and uh, basically uh, you know it became more of a, of a of a duel between rain and another rain user uh, basically uh, going at each other whoever wins will have the title of having the permission to use the rain uh, theme team for the tail leak um, so basically this is what it is ladies and gentlemen whoever is gonna win this bell is gonna have the privilege in using it uh, uh, you know to be honest I'm okay if I lose because basically I'm gonna you know I would go do weather afterwards but the thing is my brother Chris have really helped me out getting the Pokemons and I got myself a crew of Pokemons, a lot of Pokemons here and I think that they would have been wasted so I'm gonna try to do my best to try to um, avoid uh, such thing from happening but again you know we're just gonna see how the game is gonna go anyways so I'm gonna try to go specifically into the analyzation of this bell I know both of us will use Politoed um, this is Johnny Diesel of course the guy that really uh, you know basically uh, truly uh, showcase its uh, skills uh, to the to the people around the league, uh, the Liteo league, and uh, you know the only way we could pro you know properly have a, a justice a fair fight is you know not to really give one person the permission just you know have a bell whoever wins has this you know for him to go with. So basically, he does have Politoed, I have Politoed. He's got a more of an offensive pressure outside of Amoongus, while I also got an offensive pressure combination with Ferrothorn. So we both have our own grass types, but Ferrothorn under rain is just a freaking powerhouse. Now I'm exposing my team here, which is kind of bad, but then again I still got a couple of Pokemon left as an optional thing, so I personally believe that even if you see my team, I can still play around it to a certain extent. You know, plus it is my channel, basically I cannot be hiding my, my stuff, my squad here, you know? So, basically, uh, should I, uh, yeah, music should be off. And we can go dark here as well, which is pretty cool, isn't it? So we can go dark, but actually I'm just going to go with light for now. So basically, let us go with this bell, shall we? We're both going to lead, uh, actually he's going to lead to Politoed, I'm going to lead with Jolteon. Uh, now I'm expecting either Swampert, I could Baton Pass, and I probably should Baton Pass, but at the same time, I'm just switching out to Ferrothorn, expecting the Swampert, expecting the Wall Switch. He actually switches out to Gudra after I put up the rocks. I've decided, you know, that's a very good uh, basic position to put up the rocks and afterwards switch out to Zumro. Expect like a fire blast, but this is a rain team. I would not expect you to run fire, but then again, rain may disappear and fire could become very useful. Uh, Ferrothorn could have taken that, but uh, not all that well. That is still a good draw, so I cannot really retaliate all that much. So anyways, I'm going to go for the play rough. That was not the best move on my behalf, because generally speaking, Kingdra could come in, but Kingdra cannot touch me. I should have had that one in mind, because Waterfall could have potentially two-shot him, seeing how much play rough does. Play rough does around 31%, so Waterfall will do about 40-43%. Uh, so basically, that could have it would have not taken him out, but it would have come... Uh, decently close plus I could have potentially flinch him and it was fair torn switch is pretty safe against the likes of his Among Us But afterwards of course Scizor comes in and that is not good because I know Superpower is probably a thing to be expecting here So I'm gonna switch out to Polito. Don't take it all that well, but again, I am still Pressuring him to switch out and I'm gonna regain some lefties to where I can take another superpower from the likes of it He is I believe indeed a li life orb set isn't he? Anyways, I'm gonna go for hypnosis sadly managed to miss which is pretty bad because Amoongus put to sleep could have been very useful here uh, Amoongus does have Giga Drain and going against rain could be very 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 detrimental So basically he switches out to Politoed as I go for the hypnosis again, he knows that uh, the most expendable man is probably his Politoed because uh, it's meant to be used as a rain uh, abuser uh, to set up the rain and that's about it. But as you guys can see, 
Politoed and Politoed and Rain is not around. That is, uh, yeah, that, that, that's something you don't see every day. But anyway, Swampert is going to come in. I'm going to switch out to Jolteon. That is very bad. That is horrible, actually. But uh, I'm going to decide to review that I do got Paton Pass here. Paton Pass is for the likes of ground types such as this. Uh, so I don't have to uh, play around with Volt Switch. Uh, plus I could make like a Force Switch. But this way I can actually avoid uh, a move or two. This way I can actually see the Protect coming in before my Baton Pass is excellent. Because now I can switch out to Ferrothorn. I'm pretty sure he's going to switch out uh, to his Gudra. Probably expect maybe he's a Sap Sipper one. I wouldn't expect Hydration right now because he's got Mega Swampert. I would expect Sap Sipper Gudra um, for some support with Power Whip. But... Uh, Iron Head does a respectable amount, considering I don't got any curse boosts yet. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, that is a cursing Ferrothorn. That is a powerhouse. Anyways, I'm gonna go for the Drain Punch. I was debating whether or not I should go for the Gunk Shot and finish him off, or if Drain Punch is gonna be enough based on the damage that my previous uh, move did to him, basically Iron Head. But I fell short, not to mention that Gunk Shot could have missed, so I decided, you know what, it's better to do damage than, you know, do no damage by missing, so... In general, I think that that was probably the safest move. And uh, at the same time, I feel that uh, my uh, Toxic Rook was the most expendable mon. So, I do uh, finish it off with Shadow Ball afterwards. He's gonna make an excellent move here. Johnny Diesel really pulling through with a pursuit. Um, basically really shattering the ground here. Doing some significant amount of damage. And is that uh, Scizor Life Orb? I cannot seem to say. I'm not... Uh, uh, I'm trying to see if he's life or, but uh, we're going to see that a little bit later on. Anyways, Palitos is going to come in. I believe, uh, did I make a double switch here? Cannot seem to say. I believe I did. I did make a double switch, right? So, Amoogus is going to come in. That is not a switch I want to be facing. So, I have to switch out the hell out of there. Jolteon has been heavily dented, which means I cannot take it on. I'm expecting him to now maybe play in it safe, but he actually makes a double switch as well. Now, sadly enough for him, his Sap Sipper, which I actually expect it to be a Sap Sipper Gudra, is gone. Which means, uh, for now, I'm going to go for the curse, expecting him to switch out to Scizor. Uh, sadly, he does not do that, and... Uh, well, basically, I'm thinking, okay, now here is a opportunity, okay? I can go for the power whip, but if Scissor comes in, that's bad. Four time resist. But I'm thinking he will not do that. And he knows that I will probably over predict because he can take Iron Head really, really well. But he cannot take a power whip. So power whip is going to whip his ass. And it's going to destroy the Mega Swampert. So that is a huge threat out of the way. Not to mention we got our own Mega Swampert. And not to mention that we got Azumarill. Azumarill late game is an absolute beast. So I'm thinking I may potentially take this, uh, you know, this superpower, but sadly enough, I actually cannot. So Iron Barb's coming in. Actually, I believe that is the reason I was so confused uh, whether or not he was alive for because of the Iron Barb's and all this Stealth Rock damage involved. So I was uh, this whole time thinking he's actually, you know, um, he's alive for, but uh, he's probably Choice Bandit looking at it now, all the damage he's been doing. So Swamper coming in, thinking I can put up the rain, that's true. But will I gain anything? No, because he's got Kindra. I don't want the rain to be up. And he's not switching up to his own Polytoth, which is excellent. Now, he actually does uh, manage to miss Dither, which is actually pretty bad. But uh, considering that Dither is no rain, considering there is no... Um, you know, Kindra basically a rain boost uh, would have, would have probably if his specs could have potentially one shot me, but it would have done about 60, 70, I would imagine, from that range. If he was specs, probably a little bit more. But anyways, we managed to uh, two shot it, which is incredible. And now I'm gonna start to put up the rain. When Kindra is gone, it's basically the only swim swimmer around being gone, and that is the tyranny, the absolute destruction, the Pokemon that is an absolute beast. On the rain is is gone so stuff uh, become a little bit uh, less of a uh, mind buggle but he did manage to go for the spore on my switch i was expecting giga drain but spore will do and i'm really hoping here now the first uh, giga drain did 42 percent ladies and gentlemen the second one may take me out and i did manage to wake up i'm gonna go for the scald and may i get a burn i do manage to get a burn which is excellent he's gonna go for the giga drain and we managed to survive that is a 37 percent first one was 42 and this is 30 cent that's a five percent differential there which basically means that that's some mi minimum and maximum roll dice on those two turns which is actually pretty damn sickening but uh, you know it uh, it allows me to get some more 
uh, residual damage. I aren't doing too much, but it does kind of give me the idea that this is a special defensive among us without a doubt. Uh, running uh, Black Sludge, of course, being part poison. Okay, there was a minor interruption because of my bandicam and not being registered. I still need to work on that. But anyway, so let's go back to that uh, particular moment that we were we were at. So basically, Scott taking us out. Burn is gonna stack up some more damage. He is indeed, as I mentioned, a special defense one without a doubt. The move is truly pulling into strength right now. Uh, looking at it. Uh, Gudra could have potentially have been no. Gudra was not a physical defensive one. Yeah, Polytot is uh, probably the uh, the defensive uh, thing to a certain extent. So gonna go for the Shadow Ball. Not doing enough damage, ladies and gentlemen. Just not pulling through. That is bad. But you see, that is still Amungus, and uh, Rain is up. That was basically the the reasoning behind Polytot use. But he's got his own Rain. And he's still not using it. Swampert would really appreciate it. I do got Ice Punch. And I believe I will use it here just in case. Uh, well, I could have go for Earthquake. And I believe Ice Punch is 75. Uh, doubling that damage is 150. Uh, earthquake and doubling the stab is probably um, the same amount of damage, isn't it? So the output of those two is pretty much the same. I could have Earthquake here, uh, to be uh, completely honest, and pretty much destroy the Among uh, Among Us or this Palitoth on the Switch. He is indeed a defensive one, taking that Earthquake quite well. But here is where I start to realize, wait, I can take this into my advantage. No, he actually wakes up. The guy wakes up, uh, I mean the girl wakes up. I'm going to go for the Scald, manage to not burn me. I'm gonna go for a power punch. Oh man, so close. And he can go for the scout again. Now here's a big moment, ladies and gentlemen. Because you see, this pilot would be in asleep. Manage to avoid the burn. Gonna go for the power punch. This is a plus two. If he's got damp rock right now, rain is still gonna be around. This is the last turn if he doesn't have it. Is this his own damp rock? Is this his own is his own basic coffin? Yes, ladies and gentlemen. He's got damp rock, which means rain is around, aqua jet. Plus two, unstoppable, 800 attack, insane. You, you just don't play with this guy anymore. So basically, I can easily go for the waterfall. I'm a salt vest. I could have taken the Giga Drain from this amount of range easily enough. Maybe potentially even two. But that will be the game. So ladies and gentlemen, it came down to be an excellent match. Very close. I think that uh, by the end, I realized, wait, I realized my faults here. Uh, you see, Among Us can take on my Swamper to that amount of range. Ice Punch will probably fail of taking him out one shot. While he is special defensive, I still think I would have failed. And the problem with that is the Giga Drain is probably going to regain every HP he's got going for him. Which means that Zumero against, yeah, against Among Us would lost. Which is basically the reason I started setting up against a sleeping Palatot, which, you know, actually did wake up. But being forced, being asleep as he was, I saw that opportunity and set up against him. Now, if I was a belly drum, that would be very, very much harder to do. Because Bullet Punch would have outspeed and uh, the, reason, the remainder of HP I would have been at, it would have taken me out. But, being that I was uh, a Power Punch Assault Vest set, it managed to... Uh, work into my favor so Azumaro making that late game as a Azumaro as should of course the easter egg looking bunny Pokemon I love this Azumaro man he is a true uh, true glory and absolute I mean she is the true glory she is she she, she, she I mean I'm sorry but um, Azumaro she she's just the best I can't forget mega you know mega what is it called mega low bunny Azumaro. It's all about that Azumaro, you know? <laughs> yeah, Azumaro. You're so freaking amazing. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that was a match against Johnny Diesel. I think it was a match, man. Uh, damn. Uh, Johnny Diesel is going to need to find himself a new uh, theme team, uh, sadly enough. Uh, we managed to win so we can take, we can claim this theme to our own. Rain is coming. The storm is coming. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace. And do challenge Litel. Face me. For glory and honor. Yes, Chris, you watching this? You freaking come up on top, brother. I need to face you. Let's go. You even made this team, man. How sickening is that? <laughs> oh, man. Peace out, guys. Have a nice rest of your day, night, whatever.